Well, Merry Christmas. May I say that to you? Also, uh, I want to remind you that you probably picked up a bag and it's got things in there for you and the children to do if you have children. So make sure you do that. It doesn't have to be on Christmas Day. You probably made other plans, but sometimes not. And we want to give you just a little message today because we're not having service because we had four services yesterday and I hope you enjoyed them. So what I want to talk about, you've heard this before. This is like such a traditional message, but it's a, it's a good message. It's, a, it's true. You have the cradle, the cross, and the crown, okay? And right now we're in the cradle season, right? We're, we're thinking about Jesus being born and, and that this one came in the flesh. Without the cradle, there is no cross. And, and fascinating is that we just have one picture of him as a little boy. Right, he's uh, I think eleven, and he's in the temple like debating with the Pharisees, and the parents leave. Bad parents leave, and they discover while they're traveling that they don't have their son Jesus. So they go back to the temple, and they see him sitting there, young, and holding his own with these Pharisees, these people that are older and have studied more than him. But remember, he came with some innate knowledge. Okay. Because he was a God, he was a God baby, he was a God child, and he was a God man. And, and all, through all that. And what's really hard for us to imagine is how did he do that? Well, he, as, as Janelle's uh, Advent talks about, he, he gave up the right to use his divine powers. That's what he did. He laid those aside so he could do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. So you have the cradle. Now, the cross has nothing to do with Christmas, but it does because it's part of the whole story. Because obviously he grew up and at around age 30, he started practicing his ministry. Uh, he was baptized. This is fascinating that, you know, John didn't want to baptize him, but he's telling him, no, I want you to baptize me. And that started his ministry, right? And he immediately went into temptation in the desert, fasting and praying for 40 days, defeated the devil, and then did his ministry, but then he died on the cross. He, his mission was to come and die on the cross, okay? So as a child, I believe he knew where he was going to end up and what he was doing. And that, uh, I just think, to me, what would I be thinking about if I knew that my mission in life was to end my life at around age 33 on a cross? Because that was the bargain that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit made as a covenant agreement that when uh, human beings fell away from the grace of God, that God would show up as Messiah and would take care of business. What we could not do for ourselves, okay? Uh, that's that's the cradle and the cross. Now the crown. So uh, I'm reading uh, a commentary on Sermon on the Mount. I love the Sermon on the Mount. It's it's misunderstood, first of all. But understand, he's talking about the kingdom there. It's the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. He's talking about what what does his reign and rule look like here and now, Okay. And it, new principles to guide us. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they should be full, filled. Like, what is he saying? The first shall be last. All, all these unique sayings. So my father-in-law would say it's a different economy. So that's where the crown comes in. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. And he, he had to come to the cradle to be born, right? He had to go to the cross to complete his redemptive work and do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And then he went up to heaven and to receive a crown. And one day, that, that whole kingdom is going to come back here in fulfillment, in real. Like right now, we experience some of the rule of God, but it's going to be in full measure, right? It's going to be, so like if I'm talking to somebody on a Zoom call, then I'm experiencing something about them, but it's going to be different when we finally meet in person and, and sit down at the table and talk. Well, Jesus is coming back in person to usher in the full reign of his kingdom. 
Without the cradle, there could be no cross. And with the cross, there could be no crown. And that's the complete story. So I want you to think about that today. Think about what a wonderful gift uh, his kingdom is to us. Remember, I think it's in Romans 14, 12. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. So we can enjoy that now. It's a now kingdom. It's a now reign. Jesus once said, the kingdom of God is in your midst. Well, what did he mean by that? Because Jesus was being ruled by God right then and there. So it's about his reign over our life, his lordship over our life. And uh, that, that would be a great present for you if you would surrender your life to God and say, I, I believe in you. I, I believe in your son. Because you could be listening right now and not have a relationship with God. And that all comes by you. you all you have to say is, Jesus, I believe you now. I believe you to be the one to die for my sins, to be buried, to be raised from the dead. And you can have that relationship with him. Cradle, cross, crown. And one day we'll receive the crown of righteousness when we reign with him. And that's in the Bible. All right. I'm going to pray, okay? Lord, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for uh, celebrating. Thank you for family. Bless these families, I pray, as, as we uh, continue to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas.